Hey everyone! Today I'd like to have a look at a beautiful painting with you all by Roger van der Weyden. He is uh, one of the most famous painters of the Northern Renaissance. So basically, um, say 15th century, north of the Alps, and of course one of the most famous Flemish painters, um, together with Jan van Eyck probably, from the same time. He was also very famous during his lifetime, however the funny thing is that eventually these paintings from the 15th century fell out of fashion. And since Van der Weyden never signed his paintings, today we don't actually know with 100% certainty that these are his, they are attributed. However, there is, um, I think, a consensus pretty much across the board that these are actually his paintings and very few question marks, so we don't have to worry about that. The painting I'd like to look at is a nativity scene. It's the Middleburg altar, or I guess Middelburg, as you say in the north. I hope I'm not getting this wrong. And uh, it's a pretty much a typical nativity scene. You have Mary at the center with the newborn Christ child in a stable. On one side you have Joseph and on the other side you have a donor. As this was created for an altar, you also have two side panels. This would be the left hand side and the right hand side. And all together they create a story that draws from antiquity to the epiphany. What we're seeing here on the left hand side is the vision of the Emperor Octavian. Uh, it's a story where he asked Sybil whether he was the uh, greatest man and as a response he was shown the Virgin with the Christ child through the window. An interesting little detail is here in the window panels we can see the double-headed eagle on a yellow background. That is the symbol of the emperor and I think also specifically the symbol of the Habsburgs as for a long time the Netherlands were too, were part of the Habsburg Empire. On the right hand side we can see the adoration of the Magi with the little Christ child here in the sky basically like the star that drew the Magi to him. If we have a brief look at the entire altar, we can see that these three panels are composed in a way, so they, they look like a, a unified whole. The figures all seem to be placed in the same dimension. Do they have the same height? Even though they're obviously in three different places. And it's also noticeable how they all form a half circle. But on the side panels, the figures face away from us, while in the centerpiece, they face towards us. Now let's have a closer look at the centerpiece. 
So one of the um, aspects of Van der Weyden's paintings that I think at the time uh, were already really amazing and um, made them very popular is how lifelike they were and how realistic. It wasn't long before that uh, sort of the international style was popular which is a gothic style that was popular all across Europe where you had kind of much more uh, of a flat style, so flat dimensions, not necessarily realistic renditions of faces and expressions and in fact medieval paintings weren't that long beforehand where you didn't have this kind of detailed background. So paintings really developed quite fast during that time and Van der Weyden's paintings were amazing. What we are seeing here, if we look closely, for one are beautiful colors. The Virgin at the center is depicted in a very light bluish white dress with her dark blue gown around her. This is also where we have the Christ child. On the left hand side we can see Joseph. He's wearing a beautiful bright red. And I really like this detail with the buttons all the way down here. They're always in pairs, all the way down. On the right hand side we have the donor. We don't know for sure who that was, but he was probably associated with Philip the Good, who was the Duke of Burgundy. And if we turn the page for a moment, this here is a portrait of Philip the Good and you can see that this is pretty much the same outfit except that he's wearing that fancy black hat. Do we have the same kinds of shoes? And the same coat. In the stable we have a bull and the donkey behind. We have three angels here on the bottom. I really like this creamy yellow in combination with the light red. And then on top we have another three angels here. Again in this cream, yellow, red, in blue and in green. One thing that sticks out is that the stable, which seems a little derelict at that point, has Romanesque window arches, meaning they are small windows and they are round. In the background, however, we can see a city that for Van der Weyden's time was probably contemporary. I don't know if it's a real city or whether he uh, imagined it in this particular way. But we can see that we have some gothic features here on this tower. As well as here on the windows. So there was a change in architecture too. 
This here is an old architecture of a bygone age and here in the background you have contemporary architecture for the time and there's one little detail that I really really like and that is the donor if we look closely these figures here on the side are all integrated with one another but the donor, despite being on the same plane, seems a little set apart. Now, the reason for that is this. If we follow his silhouette, we can see that he doesn't touch this wall. There's a little gap here in the middle. His hands almost overlap with Mary's dress, but again, there's these smallest little gaps between his pinky and the outline of the dress. And then here his coat just there touches the silhouette of Mary's gown but only just about so it's like there's an invisible line here that separates him from this holy image on the side and behind him we can see that there's a gap in the wall on his side almost like he wandered through here from somewhere there across this little hill we can see there's a small street a path that leads up behind the trees and then towards that road into the city and I read that maybe we could interpret it that he is in fact physically somewhere there in this city maybe behind one of these windows lost in prayer our contemplation and that allowed him to leave that place and in his mind he wandered out here towards that quiet scene he looks quite peaceful I really like that thought and I really like that painting too I hope that having a closer look at it allowed you to take a moment out of your busy day and to find some calm and peace I'll see you again tomorrow and I can he hinted the fact that we're going to have a look at another nativity scene in a couple days. All right, for today, thank you for watching and see you soon. Good night.